All righty. True. I feel like we have to start out with the important stuff, which is uh, I saw that you have a men's hair product deal. I mean, I don't know if there's ever been a more natural fit for a, uh, an athlete in a, in a company to come together. It's a very authentic uh, sponsorship. I mean, I, I, was, I was using the product before we even started communicating, so uh, I just hope to do right by them. Well done. Well done. Uh, big win last time out. Bonus. I mean, great performance. I guess just how important was that? I know how frustrated you were from the one previous. So how important was that to go out and just have a performance like that? Uh, just showcase what we're working on. Uh, you know, we had to bring back a little bit of the old, and uh, we showcased it against Ricky Glenn, and we're just going to keep that ball moving. Um, so, yeah, this this life as an MMA fighter, there's there's peaks and valleys, and you got to be able to learn from the valleys, and uh, one of which is, man, we had to bring back a little bit of the old that I was doing, and, uh, yeah, you just got to stop believing in your own hype and keep moving forward. When you talk about the old, is it more like in game plan and tactics or more like mentality? It's uh, when you have the knockout record, right? And then you start believing it. Like, this is this is who I am and I can get this knockout, right? But we were doing stuff to get the knockout record, right? And that was, I, I entered the UFC. I was trying to prove who I was. I had setups. I had movement. And we were wrestling a little bit more. We were doing a little bit more jujitsu. And so we kind of, like, left that all behind because I was really focused on knockouts. And uh, against Ricky Glenn, we brought back the setups. And really, I was, I was ready to engage in some grappling with him. But uh, we didn't get to showcase that. So so in camp with, uh, against Moicano, we, we started working on the grappling again, the setups. Like we started with that that old Drew Dober trying to prove you know himself. I love it. So yeah, I wondered about that because I've seen how you've embraced right the record. I mean, as you should. That's a pretty incredible accomplishment in a deep division. But is there a danger of like don't lean too far into that? Where like I, I got to go out there and I I have to get a knockout to extend the record. I have to do that. Because it seems like when you hunt it, that's when it becomes more difficult. Well, that's what I did against uh, Frivola. I mean, I, I I just went in with that that <laughs> that gunslinger mentality of like I'm just gonna hit him harder, and uh, it just didn't work out well. And unfortunately, MMA is just not it's not the place where you can just like have those mentality and have those mistakes, and it, it just it gets showcased in such a large setting. So uh, Frivola showed that uh, I needed brush away that mindset, get back to the old, and now I'm back to that proving, right? I got to prove who Drew Dober is, regardless of what record is uh, is relevant. Nice. Well, you got a big platform here, right? Co-main event, ranked opponent. Uh, I guess talk to me about just kind of this opportunity and, and what this matchup means to you. Yeah, I mean, the the opportunity to fight uh, a guy like Moicano, who is who's equally as uh, vicious, violent, and he's a gamer, uh, fighting guys like Jose Aldo, uh, Korean Zombie, took RDA in like nine days' notice. The guy's a monster, and uh, these are the fights that excite me because I know uh, he's gonna bring out that in me as well, and it's it's going to be bloody, it's gonna be violent, it's gonna be fun. I mean, a, a smile on both our faces, and these are the the, the fights and the moments that I want to be remembered. Nice. Dad life still an adjustment, or have you got the routine down now? I know the balancing uh, work and, and uh, you know, family is kind of tough sometimes. I mean, I don't think you'll ever uh, find stasis and in, in balance as a parent, uh, but uh, it's such a beautiful and humbling thing, and uh, like, I just look forward to, to getting my job done and over with every single day so I can be home with her, and uh, I look forward to put Moicano away so I can get back home to see my daughter, and uh, actually, truthfully, my daughter's going to be at this, uh, this fight as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. Last thing for me, big win here. Um, are, you look, are you thinking forward? Are you looking forward? Do, do, is Michael Chandler still an option? Because I know he's still kind of lurking out there and seemed not knowing if he has a fight or not. Uh, what, what's the plan after you get this big win? I mean, I think I think Chandler's going to hold off for that Connor fight. Like, who wouldn't? I mean, we all we all want that red panty night and whatnot. Um, but uh, for me, it's whoever's available as soon as possible. Uh, I don't know how Saturday's going to go. I might need time to get healed up, but if I don't, I want to get back in there. Uh, my uh, objective is to have more fights, not – the, the special fights. And, uh, you know, I'm the type of guy that, like, I'll, I'll fight unranked fighters. I'll, I'll fight whoever, whenever. I mean, I'm like the new Donald Cerrone over here. Just You just throw me in there. We'll get the, we'll get the job done. So 2024, I'm looking to fight four times, whoever's available. If you want me to say some names, I know we got Dan Hooker, Fazeev, Jalen Turner up there. Uh, all three would be some fun fights, but uh, some are injured, some aren't available. Uh, we'll see who becomes available when it's time, and uh, I'll be there. True to your right. Um, 
you referencing all those taking all those fights in one year. You know, Cerrone had that issue where the one year he won, I think, five fights, and then he fought in December, and it kind of was led to his downfall. It was like maybe too many fights. Do you, is there ever a point where you have to slow yourself down and say, I can't just be back all the time. I have to let my body heal and my mind, you know, rest. Right. I mean, I think that's the underlining, uh, you know, the, the subtext to me trying to fight as often as I can because I, I do treat my body responsibly. I do respect my body. And uh, that's why I get better with age. At 35 years old, I feel so much better than I did at 25. And it's all correct in uh, decisions. And so when I'm trying to fight as often as possible, meaning I'm going to treat my body right, I'm going to prepare correctly, I'm going to ho hopefully have simple fights, and then, yeah, my goal is to uh, be a, a peak athlete as many times as I can this year. So when you go back and you look at your career where you are now, you, you obviously have a lot of physical skills given the different things that you can do, and obviously with the knockouts, do you feel like you've gotten everything out of your career that you could have gotten, or do you feel like if you knew then what you know now, you, you would be a little different? I mean, if I knew then what I do now, then it would be different. I mean, my, my, my 30s has taught me so much, and, I, and I'm still learning, and I'm still getting better, and that's why the, the fights are, sh are showcasing that. Uh, but have I achieved the things that I've looked out for? No, I feel like I'm behind. I think that I, I've always wanted to achieve more. I want uh, the name fights. You know, I want the fights to be remembered. Um, you know, the title is cool and everything. Uh, I'm still always going to be fishing for that gold. But I just want fights to be remembered. I want fights to, like, live in infamy. And, you know, fights like, like a Michael Chandler or a Dustin Poirier or Charles Oliveira. Like, these are the fights that I want to put my name next to. And uh, I want them to live forever. When you talk about fighting for the title, right, I mean, what is it going to take to get you, because, you know, there's some people between you and, and the, the top, you know, what do you think it takes you to get your name in the conversation, where now it's re realistic after a fight to say, hey, I want Mahachev or whoever's the champion? I mean, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I was thinking about this uh, uh, last week, and the, these rankings, and the titles, and the number one contendership, and the BMF title, all that stuff, it, it really is just timing. It's who's available in that moment, and who's able to take that opportunity. And uh, I try to stay ready for every single opportunity, but uh, when you ask me the question, what is it going to take to get me there? I have no idea because I don't know what the timing, I don't know what 2024 brings, 2025 brings, but I know I will stay ready and I will take every opportunity I possibly can. And, uh, you know, we run into some losses on occasion, but I'm the one that bounces back, takes another opportunity, showcases, uh, you know, my willingness to engage and fight and have beautiful violence every single time. So, yes, I'm going to keep fighting the bigger and better fights, hopefully get a main event, more eyes on me. Uh, but uh, I'm not looking for that, that simple path path to the title. I'm looking for that violent and memorable path to whatever goal takes place. Violent, I love it. Uh, last, just last thing you referenced before, you learned some things that you know now that you didn't know before. Can you give us one specific thing that really has made a difference in you? Patience. Patience. It's, uh, I mean, it's something I had to learn in my older age, just uh, being an intelligent fighter and not just piss and vinegar. Uh, I mean, I have the athletic ability to, to sling away, you know, uh, but uh, now we, we're being a little bit more intelligent about our approach, and uh, we're holding the impatience for when it's uh, reasonable, and uh, the birth of my daughter has uh, really showcased that, too. I mean, you got to be patient and present with every single child, and now I'm just practicing that in the octagon as well. Hey, Drew. Um, what's the Daddy, Do Daddy Dober schedule? You know, obviously we know that training camp is grueling. It takes a lot out of you. But, like, how do you take time? For, like, do you train in the morning and then go to your daughter afterwards? Like, obviously your partner has a lot to do with this, right? So what's your, I guess, how do you deal with it? All right. Well, I mean, <laughs> my wife is a baller like she's a gangster like she handles it and like that's that's the reason why I'm able to uh, train the way I do and so uh, I was blessed I mean I'm batting out of my league and I'm hitting the lottery with the the wife that I received um, but uh, it's just a lot of micromanagement um, just just we live in the Wild West in this mixed martial arts game, right? It's, it's, we don't have a schedule. We don't have a roster. We're like, you know, it's always hit or miss, and you got to figure it out. And uh, we got to do that as a parent. We just got to figure out how to make it work. My schedule is quota-based and not, like, time-based. And so I got to get it in whatever, it's, uh, whatever time it needs. 
And uh, it, it got easier with a daughter, I think, because uh, she's able to draw my attention back home. I forget about fighting on occasion, and then I become enthusiastic come Monday to get back in the gym. Um, what was training camp like dealing with uh, training for Moicano? Mike, Obviously, we know he's going to try and take you down and, and strangle you. So was camp a lot of grappling, a lot of jiu-jitsu? Uh, again, I, I love being honest with you guys. Not much has changed. Every single opponent that I've ever fought is going to dive at my legs and try to choke me out. I mean, it's, to the, it's the path of least resistance. Like, my record shows, like, grappling Drew Dober is the way to go, right? So, I'm a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. I work diligently with my jiu-jitsu all the time. Uh, I just don't use it offensively enough in the octagon so people forget that I can. I mean, I used to compete in jiu-jitsu tournaments all the time, uh, uh, and, and I'm fairly decent at it. So, hopefully, Mo uh, Moicano brings in that jiu-jitsu so that way I could showcase to the world that like I didn't leave it behind. Like I still have it, and we still work on it every single day. But uh, punching people is just so much more fun. Is that something that you would like to prove? Like, you know, uh, you know, obviously a lot of your losses have come by submission loss. So like, do you want to prove like I'm getting better at this? Uh, it's not anything that I want to come out and prove. Uh, I'm just going to prove it based upon what the opponent wants to bring. And uh, I think the mistake that I made against Islam Makachev was that avoidance of grappling. I didn't want to grapple him. But now we change that. Like, I'm, I can grapple with the best in the world, and I know this. And, uh, and so if Moikano wants to bring it there, I'm going to showcase it. But that's not the objective. The objective is to have a simple night and put my hands on somebody. Um, obviously, have you seen a lot of people saying, like, this is the people's main event? Like, this, of, of all the fights on the card, this is the one to watch? I mean, I love hearing that, and I love bringing it every single time, and I hope you guys feel the same way. Every time I step in that octagon, I want that to be the pe people's main event. I want, I want to be the featured bout in the prelims, that, the featured bout on the main card. Like, like, I want to have that exciting fight and, you know, hopefully carry that BMF title someday. And then finally, uh, you know, you say you want four fights this year. Uh, would that be a welterweight to you? I know you've teased, you know, going back to welterweight, and I know obviously getting older, the weight cut probably getting more annoying. Uh, yeah, the weight cut is always annoying. Uh, it's actually gotten better. Uh, I mean, you, you got to find ways to eat around having a, do uh, a daughter. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm just stuck between weight classes. I think I'm a prime 165er, and there's no 165, so I'm too small for 70, too big for 55. I think it's just an opportunity-based. Uh, I already said I'd fight RDA at welterweight, uh, and you know, like so. Uh, who knows? But as of right now, I mean, I'm the KO king in the lightweight division, and we're gonna keep that string going. And uh, man, when I get tired of lightweights, we can move up to welterweight and have fun with it. But uh, as of now, as sucky as it is, we'll continue making 55.